story I want to talk about, I was going to talk about yesterday, but I ran out of time. And I think it's an interesting story because it, it kind of hinges on that conflict between religion and science. Now, the conflict's been going on since the first nerd picked up a textbook. We're going to look at the life and times of a man named Thomas Dick. Now, I will say this. I found out about this guy because I was prepping another story. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. A Christian philosopher slash scientist. And I was like, oh, I'm going to look into this guy. I'm kind of scrolling through my phone, looking at it at work. And then I just started laughing. First off, let's address his last name. Now, I am not so immature that when I see a guy with the last name of Dick, I immediately think of penises. I saw his name. I'm like, Thomas Dick. It didn't even occur to me. I'm like, oh, you know. I started reading the article, and it's like, there's on Wikipedia, it was like, you know, Thomas Dick was born in this is the year, and he was doing this. And then it said he worked at his father's linen shop. His father made, like, wove clothes or something like that. I guess I should preface this. This starts off in the 1700s. This is mostly late 1700s, early 1800s. It's like the father, he had this, had this, um, had this, um, linen shop where he made clothes. His father's name, this great Christian philosopher, would go on to be this author, this influential author. His father's name is Mungo Dick. Mungo Dick. And I laughed out loud when I saw that. Now, that's when I was like, okay, let's break down Mungo Dick here for a second. One, it makes it sound like he has a huge dick. If if you go, dude, that's a Mungo Dick, you, you don't think, oh, that must be a Scottish name. You're like, no, that means the dude has a big dick. Now, to be fair, when these guys were around in the late 17, early 1800s, Dick what didn't mean penis yet, but it does now. So when I'm reading an article and there's a guy named Mungo Dick in it, I'm going to laugh out loud. Secondly, and again, I know that Mungo is... Oh, and by the way, Mungo means uh, beloved in Scot Scottish. So basically his name is Beloved Dick. But b m m I get that Mungo is a Scottish name and it's like probably a little racist for me to make fun of it. But when I think... Of Mungo, I think of a eight foot tall brute Gollum esque, not Gollum from Lord of the Rings, but like big stone dude, Solomon Grundy dude. That's who you think of. You think of a henchman. You think of a lunk guy named Mungo. Imagine growing up in a house with a guy named Mungo. Again, you guys are like Jason. This is. A so I'm trying to read this article now after having this vision of this lurching henchman just standing behind this young boy and I just couldn't focus anymore. So Thomas Dick was, I just imagine this giant like Mungo. <laughs> Mungo no like science. Mungo like God. And then Thomas Dick's like, but dad, you have to understand God made science. And Mungo's like, whoa. Head hurt. And I imagine that was pretty much his childhood life. And you go, well, that might be an exaggeration, but it's not really, because he wanted to be a scientist because he saw a meteor one day. And so he's reading all the books he could, even when he was in the linen shop. Mungo's, like, crashing through the shop, throwing books around. Make yarn! Make yarn! <laughs> and so, anyway, so Thomas Dick, because he had no support from his parents early on, he actually made his own telescope. By gr he got like some eyeglasses and ground down the lenses. I think that story is probably a bit apocryphal. I, I don't think that story actually happened. But it would be awesome if it did. Just to give something for Mungo to destroy. He's like, no, I think. She's like, Dad, no, I worked on that. Uh, only see with real God eyes. Anyways, by the time he was 16, his parents kind of started to warm up to the egg. Because I guess I should have said this before Mungo destroyed the shop. They were Christian. They were like, not like super crazy Westboro Baptist Church Christian, but they were devout. So when their son was like, oh, look at shiny stars. Maybe that's like a rock from another galaxy. Mungo's like smashing through the wall. So anyways, but by the time they're 16, they're like, uh, I mean, uh, science may be okay. And then Thomas is like, yay. Anyways. So he starts to like really get into the science stuff. Now what's okay. He becomes a teacher. He becomes a writer. And 
he starts writing he starts writing articles for a magazine and i thought this was another just bizarre how okay you have a magazine he start okay so he starts i'm reading this article and i'm thinking who wrote this mad libs on a board afternoon we got mungo dick running around and he writes for a magazine called monthly magazine that is the most I mean, I, I I thought about it afterwards, and I thought, yes, there are newspapers called, like, the Daily Star or the Daily Tribune, but I don't know if I've ever seen a newspaper called Daily Paper. That's just it. But anyways, he wrote for a magazine that came out every month called Monthly Magazine. It should have been, actually, now that I think about it, it should have been Mungo's Monthly Magazine. That would have been much better. It was... It's, that would be a better plot. Mungo actually has a monthly magazine, not a linen shop, I'm glad I'm rewriting this guy's life history. And it is a magazine dedicated to uh, religious topics and sports. And Mungo's like, me put religion in for soul, but sports is what makes me feel alive. And it's all like rugby stuff because they're in Europe. And the son's trying to like sneak in science articles. And so as Mungo's like proofreading, he has his little glasses on on his giant monster head. As he's trying to proofread the magazine, he notices like in the sports article. Because the sports articles would say stuff like, ball smash through goal, team win. And then he starts to notice like equations sneaking in there like, the ball arced 90 degrees. Oh, and then Mungo's just like smashing the printing press. Son, what you do? Where these numbers come from? Okay, let's get back to the real story here. So Thomas Dick ends up writing these books and he writes a bunch of books about Christian philosophy. One of them, his, his big book was The Christian Philosopher or The Connection of Science and Philosophy with Religion. And that, he, that was a huge book and he, it was about him trying to merge the two ideas together. And from then on out, he was known as the Christian philosopher. And he was highly regarded as like a well-thought-out guy who actually did a good blend of science and religion. But where he started to go wrong, because that's all just thought experiments where I could say, here's science, here's religion, and these are the ways we can look at them. What started to go wrong, other than Mungo, then smashing through the city of London, that was actually a big incident. They had to take Mungo down because he was attacking a bunch of bobbies. So, but the the big problem he made was that he started to basically formulate scientific theories himself. And he was a smart guy. And people have looked back and said, it's interesting because he used data. He actually, like, he thought like a scientist. But his conclusions were wildly off. And he came to this, this calculation that there's 250 people per square mile in Britain. And there's millions and millions of square miles in the solar system. God would not create an empty universe. Therefore, to extrapolate all that information in our solar system alone, 22 trillion living creatures, from little ant monsters to full humanoids. In our solar system alone, 22 trillion people. On the moon, he believed there were 4 billion people. Now, of course... This was, this caught the attention of millions of people, very controversial in the scientific community, but it, it excited the imagination of the public who read the book. They're like, whoa, we're surrounded by, we're in a living universe. In 1837, Thomas Dick came up with the idea to draw a giant triangle in the middle of Siberia. So that way other aliens would go, hey, look, there's life down there. And it's funny because that's a stupid idea now. But back then, they didn't have cities illuminated with lights. Like, really, the only way that you could look at a planet in passing to see if there was life on it back then would to have a continent-sized drawing on it. And he's like, listen, I know that's going to take a lot of work, but my dad and a plow, that triangle is done in a day. He he can easily walk across Siberia in a day. Hey, I didn't realize that. Siberia and Kuzia. Anyway, so, the cat. The cat, meow. Mongo-like cat he's like petting the cat and they're like no mungo no no you're petting it too hard oh mungo so sad (laughs) so anyways what happened was of course as scientific advancements get better his theories start to fall further and further out of favor and a story that we're going to be covering tomorrow let's consider this a little bit of part one he plays a minor role in that story and that's why i'm talking about it now 
He plays a minor role in that story. But that story also helped lead to his downfall in a way because it was a hoax that he got caught up in unknowingly. He didn't know he was getting caught up in it. But And then, you know, so he was this great writer and philosopher and stuff like that. But in the end, he died pretty much penniless. He didn't make a lot of good deals with his publishers and he died. His books, other people, uh, David Livingston, the dude who was like in the jungles and they're like Livingston, I presume. He got lost in the jungle or something. I don't know why you're famous for getting lost in the jungle. But anyways, he went out there and did a bunch of like nature work and other jungle stuff and he compared he's famous he's famous but so he's just not nobody but i guess he's famous just for being lost anyways he i guess his review doesn't matter now that i just realized he's just a just a, a guy who doesn't know directions he said that the books that thomas dick wrote were on the level of the bible like that's how that's the level of esteem he had in his lifetime people Looked to him for a way to bridge those two things. And he ended up dying pretty much penniless. Mungo actually had to dig his grave with his bare hands, crying the whole time, going, Why God take son? No God, only science. And then like lightning. So that, that didn't happen, obviously. That didn't happen, obviously. It is interesting, though, to note that, again, the word dick did not mean penis when they when he was young but by the time Thomas Dick died the word dick definitely was slang for penis so i'm sure he had to hear a lot of jokes before his last 5 years of life about having a dad named Mungo Dick but that's the life and times of Thomas Dick i wanted to talk about that i think the story is interesting and i think it's interesting how they've still never really been able to combine those two paths so maybe they're not compatible science and religion but again, I think science doesn't care whether or not they're compatible, and religion does want them to be compatible, does kind of glom onto it, and that's really what that story exemplifies. Thomas Dick was really trying to say, hey, listen, give me some of that science, give me some of that knowledge, I'm with you. And Yeah, we've never been able to really find that gap. You hear a lot of paranormal investigators saying, hey, let's get a scientist over here. Let's use this equipment to see if we can scientifically prove ghosts exist. You never hear a scientist goes, you know what we really need to figure out how the Higgs boson works? We need a bunch of psychics. Let's get some remote viewers over to CERN and find out what's going on. Weird divide. It's a weird little break. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.